Hello, welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So in my last video, I added the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120 cooler to the Cooler League and it performed very well finishing it I think it was a very respectable second which is some going or it was in the leading group anyway so after the video uh, my friends at Thermalright offered to send me another cooler so without further ado let's have a look at the cooler they sent me so Thermalright sent me the Frozen Note 360 White ARGB an AIO cooler so it's a bit of a departure away from the Peerless Assassin. So it's going from an air cooler to an AIO and this will be the second AIO that I'm adding to the lead. So we'll be able to see how it performed. One of the things that, that those of you who have watched the first AIO that I added will have noticed that performance wise the AIO tends to do very very well in terms of lowering temperatures, noise etc etc. Where it tends to fall down on is the price and also the complexity of install which is what draws it back in terms of points in the Cooler League. So it's going to be interesting to see how this cooler, which tends to become from a more reputable brand shall we say than the last, to see how it does, to see if the install is any easier, to see if you know it performs any different etc etc etc. So it, there's two ways to look at the uh, adding an AIO to the league. One, in terms of where it sits in the league, and two, as I mentioned, to keep an eye on those temperatures. Because if you're going to buy an AIO, you're not buying it because you're looking to, you know, keep the costs down. You're looking for that performance. So while it might not finish towards the top of the league, you know, what I'm really going to be looking for is the temperature performance to see how much headroom you would have with it to say if you wanted to put a. Uh, a, a more recent CPU in there or even look to overclock the CPU that you've got to see how much headroom you're going to go for that. Okay, so keeping that in mind, next I'm going to get on to the install. Once I've done the install, I'll give you my thoughts on the install, then we'll get on to the scores and then finally it'll be general conclusion. All right, without further ado, it's on with the install. So interestingly, the block for the AIO doesn't come with anything attached so you either have to go through the Intel bracket or the AMD bracket. For the Intel install you have a back plate that has uh, your peerless off and these are thermal pads which basically cushion against the back plate of the motherboard and they come through. You can adjust either for 1156 or 1200 like I've got or you can go for 1700 so this AIO is 1700 socket compliant. So install wise, there are three main points that stick out for me. Uh, one, the block is actually incredibly easy to install. It was very, very simple to do and you can probably see from the install video part that it was not that difficult. The second part is that when you get it out of the box, the actual fans are already attached to the radiator, which from an installation point of view, like myself, when I was screwing in from behind the radiator means that you don't have to mount the fans. The downside of that is if you want to put the fans say on the outside of the case and the radiator on the inside of the case means you've got to take all the fans off before putting it all back together again, which is a bit of a pain. So 
it can be easy, it could be a bit more difficult. The third part is the actual wires from the both for the RGB and for the actual fan control themselves. You can daisy chain the um, RGB, fan, RGB wires and there's a splitter for the four, uh, sorry, sorry, for the three fan cables to go into the motherboard for controlling the speed of the fans, the CPU, etc. Not a big problem, and it's nice that you can daisy chain them, etc., which means you can control them. But we're starting to see a lot of AIOs that have got basically the fans that where they clip together, which means you've only got one wire coming off the end. That would have been nice, but all in all, I think the installation was pretty easy if I compare it to, say, the other, the AM Choice uh, AIO that I did, I think the installation was easier for this. Making sure you got the right level of compression and contact on the CPU was easier. Just generally putting the black paint on, screwing it on was actually a doddle. It was probably in line with some of the easier colors out there. So all in all, not too bad. All right, so that's the installation. Let's get on to the scores and then I'll get on to my final conclusion. So base temps. The, the, the frozen note hit 30 degrees as a base temp, which isn't the best, but really the fans weren't kicking in, so not too bad a result all in all. Base sound. With the fans not really kicking in, there was still a little bit of audible noise, but it wasn't too bad. Base sound was 35 decibels, which isn't the best out there, so it's towards the bottom when it comes to bass noise, but still wasn't that bad. Average Cinebench score. This is where it really did very well. We got an average Cinebench score of 4875, which is the joint top with the ID SE226 XT Black. So it's done really, really well and really shine this metric. Max temp. The average max temp that we saw was 59.7, which is only beaten by its brand competitor, which is the Peerless Assassin. Basically, it handled the CPU really, really, really well. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think it's got a lot more capacity left in it. So would this be able to cool, say, something like a 13900K? I'd be reasonably comfortable that it would. Max sound. The average max sound was 44 decibels. Again, because the bass sound was a little bit higher, so I don't think the fans that come with it are that great. They did kick in, but they really didn't ramp up. But there was still a little bit of noise. I couldn't really hear what I would say was like audible um, pump noise. It was all really coming from the fans. So it's in the towards the bottom half, but still not too bad. The scoring ranges have stayed as they were. No changing there. The Cooler League. Here we are in the top half of the table. And the Frozen Note is third in the standings with a score of 32. But it goes third because of the tiebreaker, which is the max temp. So it's done really, really well. And as an AIO, because this has got such a cheap price at $70, it's set it aside compared to, say, the AM Choice, which also performed well. But because it was so expensive, it really suffered because of that. If, it had got the, if the AM Choice cooler was the same price of this then you've just got an extra three points, which would have seen, seen it rise to, say, fourth or fifth. So it's, I think the price has really made a difference for the Frozen Note. As it's uh, in the top half of the table, there's no change to the bottom half of the table, and here we see the Enemax ETS T40 Fit still languishing firmly bottom of the table. All right, that's all the scores done. Let's move on to my final conclusion. So overall conclusion, it's a great cooler. It performed well on all aspects. It was a tiny bit noisy than I thought it was going to be, but you can't really complain about that because the temperature performance was really, 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 really good. You could tell the fan curve was kicking in because at the start with the base temperature, which was a little bit higher than I would have liked, but once it started, once the fans kicked in, the temperature never really got that high. The maximum was around 60, which is just incredible. For when you're really taxing the uh, CPU like that, it showed great performance. So, and then you look at the price of $70 for this, for this 360 AIO from Amazon, it's an absolute steal. So with the price in mind, the, the relative ease of installation for an AIO and the performance of it, I would definitely recommend this cooler. All right, I hope you all found that useful. If you did, please toss a like on the video. If you didn't like the video, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you've got any questions on the AIO or any other coolers that I've looked at so far, please leave a comment down below. 
yeah, and please don't forget to subscribe. Subscribers are always welcome. I only put videos out once a month, so being subscribed means you won't miss out on any content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon, because then you'll be notified. And as always, take care.